Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the fourth session of Book Clubs Across Borders between Islamabad and Bal. Uh, my name is Alia Tayyabi, and I'll be moderating your sessions today. The book that we're reading today is called uh, um, The Sea Prayer by Khalid Husseini. Um, and uh, before we go any further, I'd like to ask if anyone from Bal would like to come and speak about the book. And then we can take it from there. And anyone who'd like to talk about the book and maybe even raise a question, so that can start the conversation. So, Balf, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. Glad to see you again. And um, about to is really to start the program and we speak about the students who uh, discuss the book and uh, I want to, yeah, Ahmed Allah is reading and he wants to say something. <coughs> Hello everyone, so happy to see you all again. So, uh, as the book was uh, from Khalid Hosseini and uh, there was Lots of things on this book. One thing was uh, so amazing for me that in this book there was maybe three or five lines in each page, but uh, there was pictures. The pictures who has thousand words to say. So the series prayer is an illustrated novel by Afghan American author Khalid Hosseini, and it was first created as a virtual book experience. The virtual reality experience in 2017, I think, and published as a book in 2018. So, illustrated in water by Don Wellens. In this book, it is just like the book dedicated to the refugees who have uh, pushed at sea filling war and persecutions. It is a response to the current refugee crisis. See prayers uh, composed in the form of a letter from a father to his son on the eighth of year journey. And the thing uh, which got me to so emotional on this book, as I say, was pictures. And also it was just kind of reality for nowadays. For example, countries like uh, Afghans, Somalis, and Iraqis are really facing this situation nowadays. So for example, in my country, uh, most of our people are trying to travel to a safe zone. They are trying to escape from the war. It's not because of the, I think that they are escaping from their country or they're leaving their mother. I mean, the mother, I mean country. It's just because they want to have a safe and peaceful life for their children and their siblings who are coming out after them. So their aim is to have a peaceful life for their children, but during their travel, they face with the worst one. It's one of the things that United Nations has pointed on. And nowadays they are trying to make it like solve this problem but this is also continuing even in our country uh when people are trying to travel from one province to other province for uh saving their children from war they're really facing with this kind of situation so in this book there was about water that uh, the boy fell in the water so there's a uh, lots of other uh realities and other things that they face with and make their lives destroyed the worse so it was what I got from this book. Thank you so much for those thoughts. And yes, um, I think you have actually um, really gotten to the core of what the book was about. Uh, just to give you a little background, the book uh, was, um, like you very correctly put, was like a virtual book that was supposed to be shared because a picture does speak a thousand words. And uh, it was just trying to explain to the world at large what was happening to the rest of the world, especially the world that was war torn and the people who were trying to find safe haven or safe shelter by uh, migrating from lands which were um, not safe for them and their families. This particular book was uh, greatly influenced by an event that shook the world and especially the migration and the immigration policies that existed in a lot of European countries. Um, after the war in Syria, the Syrian people started migrating from Syria onto 
um, other places. And because they, uh, the easiest way to find safe haven was through um, the waters, a lot of Syrian refugees were uh, coming into the borders of Europe, um, especially from the seafront. And uh, there was a picture that had um, become viral on the internet and uh, had greatly shaken up each and every person who became aware of that picture. It was a picture that was picked up by news agencies across the world. It was picked up by the media. It was, it was on social media, it was circulating. It was a picture that was shown on uh, primetime news. It was a picture that started a lot of debates. And the picture was of a small child who uh, died and his body was washed up on the shore. And uh, the problem with that picture was not just that it was a child that had died, but the problem with that picture was that it was a child who could have been saved. And it was an innocent child who had not done anything, but it had to suffer such a horrible um, event in its little life that it had on earth. And uh, this picture was something that really impacted Khalid Husseini himself when he saw the picture. And uh, the reason that it impacted him so strongly were twofold. One, that it was an event that would even melt the most hard-hearted human. But the other was that he himself was a refugee. So um, during the Soviet war in Afghanistan, he and his family had moved from Afghanistan to Pakistan. First, they had been in camps in Peshawar. And then from Peshawar, they had been able to find refuge for themselves in the United States. So he knew what it felt like to be a refugee. And the images that he was seeing that were coming out uh, from the modern world in the late 2020s, um, we're talking about the time between 2016 and 2020. Uh, it was just something that was extremely traumatic for the whole world. The, the only trauma wasn't that this was happening, but the other trauma was that nobody wanted to take these refugees in and call them outsiders when they were just human beings who were just fighting for survival. And um, this book is about how when a father who only wants safety, security, and uh, um, prosperity for their children actually journey or on a voyage by sea. And when it is on, on a ship, the only thing that they have is a prayer. And this book is that prayer that he has to kind of make sure that his children are safe. It is something that was extremely uh, troublesome. And I know that it is a lot of hard literature to read, but it is something that we can really resonate with because it is something that we see in our lives, in our countries, day in and day out. We have um, circumstances that make safety and security one of the main concerns of our land. We have... Um, incidents that happen that shake us to the core of our being because it happens very close to us. It happens in our neighborhoods, in our homes, in our schools, in our uh, educational institutions, in our cultural gatherings, in our majales, in our spaces. So it is something that we feel very close to. And I wanted us to discuss what reading this book to us felt like. So on that thought, I'd love to ask... Um, another of my uh, participants from Afghanistan who read the book to come and talk to us about what they observed and what they felt was the, was the core message of the book and uh, how they would like to t talk about it further. So Balkh, over to you. Uh, okay, in the name of Kain Allah, this is Kuala Lumpur, uh, one of book club member from Masal Shari. Uh, it's honor to be with you. And the thing that I want to mention uh, about this book, Sea Prayer, 
uh, as we know, it's a short story uh, and a letter from a, a Syrian father for his uh, son that was drowned in the water in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, but the thing that I felt after reading the book, uh, it's, the book is really nostalgic, you know. Uh, when, I, when I read the book, uh, the, the father was uh, telling the story about the past, about his childhood. And after that, the world, the life is changing. Uh, when he was a child, when the father was a child, uh, they had they have a beautiful life. They they can go everywhere. They are with grandma, grandfather, and also uh, they do they do something that that in this world in the, in these days in the story they can do that. Um, when he when he tells the story for his wife uh, that when I was a child I I do sightseeing with my friends or uh, mostly with your your uncle, but. Today, when you are not three years old, I'm just with you, between the an, an ocean that, that don't have end uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, and we just want to want to keep our life. We can just want to save our lives. Uh, when I when I read the book, uh, the first thing that I uh, think about and came in my mind is uh, how how life is dangerous and different. Uh, some people are, are live just they they live their life, but some people like countries in the world, like Syria, Iraq, or maybe or maybe Afghanistan, uh, they, they just they just uh, think for saving their lives. Uh, for example, uh, a big wish for a, maybe American girl it would be. Uh, being being pilot, being doctor, being engineer, but a first and big wish for a Afghan girl, I think it's the it's a peaceful life. The thing that most of the people around the world, uh, in the countries that they spend war, they didn't uh, experience. Maybe peace is just. It's just uh, a big dream that we never touch, uh, and we just want to touch. Uh, the book just remind me that uh, here, here we should do our best, and here we should do, try our best to uh, make equal life for everyone around the world. Because uh, we are human, we are equal, but just some some problem, some uh, I don't know, some some problems that uh, don't let us to uh, follow our goals. Just I want to solve them, and the books really really touch my heart, you know. And often they really hurt me because a three years old uh, boy was drowned in the Mediterranean water, and. Uh, it, it really hurt, you know. I just wish one day, uh, no one, no one have experience of that. I, I just wish that uh, no one, no one trying to find a peace, but they are living peace. Uh, they don't leave their homes uh, for finding peace. Their home is the peaceful uh, place for their life. I just wish that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those thoughts, Bal. Um, I'd like us to take a little more time and expand on this thought that you uh, used as your closing. And um, I, could, I could really understand where it was coming from, but I'd like us to talk a little more about it, is that when people live in developed worlds or in safe and secure worlds, they can think about what their future prospects are living in a war-torn area, then your primary concern is not what you could become in the future, but it is that you would be safe enough to survive for the future. And that is a completely different paradigm to be living in. And when we read the book, The Sea Prayer, one of the things that becomes one of our greatest realities is that the world is torn in areas of war. And uh, these areas that are war-torn, it isn't the people's fault. 
the people are just collateral in these circumstances in these wars that are enforced upon them but it is not a choice and a lot of times like the war that uh, they live through is not their choice trying to find safe shelter is also not a choice but a need it becomes like when you are stuck in a place where bombs are going uh, off every few minutes very close to you you do know that your survival would be extremely um unpredictable so you take a journey where you might or might not find safe shelter so one of the three, um and i'd like us to talk more about that also is that uh, one of the books uh, one of the themes that the book touches upon in the secret is the um absolute hope that a child that a parent has for their child regardless of where the parent is coming from or what nationality it has the emotion and hope that it has for its child is always the same which is that um the child has a safe and secure future and that is something that we constantly live through and experience as we are uh, stuck in in places which which have instability um and uh, a lot of chaos in terms of uh, security so that is something that we live on and another thing that i'd like to talk about is because we are living in pakistan and afghanistan is how it impacts the women the war does not just change the basic structure of society in terms of security but it also changes the movement of people especially women it kind of forces them to remain inside whereas once they could have they had more easy movement and i'd like us to talk about that so anyone from afghanistan who'd like to speak on that and connect it to the story as it evolves in the book i'd love to have your thoughts so afghanistan over to you Hello everyone. I hope uh, all of you are doing well and enjoying some. Um, as I said, as I did, uh, want to talk about the woman situation in this um, woman situation in this uh, situation. You know, uh, war in every uh, country has the effect. Uh, it's for, uh, based on the, um, the basic point or another part. You know, if uh, some country has a war. it also uh, directly affect in women a woman too uh, we have example of um, uh, this uh, uh, talk in afghanistan because we uh, the book mentioned the two generation the last generation and the new generation before war and after war you know uh, before war afghanistan has a lot of uh, facility uh, for education also uh, for women and boys also too uh, you know we have some uh, student from uh, abroad and couple university and also the other provinces uh, university we have for an student yeah but after war you know the situation it and uh, they can't uh, educate very well and you know the effect of the war you know uh, this uh, book mentioned that the war has directly effect in every part and it, it's not important which country have war the, every country that have war the situation in every part education for women health uh, economic every part have a difficulty like syria like iraq in afghanistan and other countries that have war Uh, and it uh, it's also have effect in women you know in uh, this book it mentioned that the um, uh, fathers uh, pray pray for her son because they um, uh, live their countries and want to go abroad and uh, the only way that the father can help her uh, son is to pray that they have believed in praying and uh, also you know they have mother 
the his son mother also are with them and the it's the bad situation and also have a directly effect in the woman uh, i think that's what the point Uh, I purchased, uh, I ended my uh, my <clears throat> Yes, please continue. I'm sorry, we, we have you back. Uh, I ended my speech. Uh, I can. Uh, I think you didn't uh, have my voice. Yeah, unfortunately, we just lost you for a bit. But um, thank you for those thoughts, and I kind of completely agree with you that uh, one of the things that is uh, paramount in this story and in the story at large is that um, a father's prayer for his child remains a constant. Um, and when we talk about war on areas and how it impacts people, especially the female population, um, it is something that no one ever talks about consciously, but it is something that is unconsciously or at, a, at the ground reality, it is something that is observed the most. When we look at the stories that evolve, that come out of Afghanistan, that come out of Pakistan, that come out of Syria or Lebanon or um, any part of the world where, where we see um, instability, the thing that um, it takes its uh, these wars the maximum is on the female population um, they, it, it becomes unsafe for them to get out of their homes it becomes unsafe for them to be able to find quality education it becomes quite uh, 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 troublesome for them to be able to find and uh, that is something that we observe a lot. But what I want to talk about is what are the steps that one can take to ensure that women um, do not end up becoming so, so vulnerable in these times. So what are the uh, what are the factors that one can that one has to look at, and what are the measures that one can take to ensure that this is something that is. Uh, less troublesome for for the um, fe female population of any given country. How can women empower themselves to uh, be able to overcome these issues? So on, on that note, I'd like to go to, uh, to uh, Balkh and ask if anyone in Balkh would like to speak about the role of women and uh, its uh, movement when we talk about um, uh, countries being uh, affected by war. Uh, hello and good time to you, Ms. Alia, Ms. Ahmed, Riyaz, and one of the person that uh, first see, uh, Alicia Tendeni. And I'm so happy to see you again, all of you. Uh, wish you all of you, uh, I hope you all of you doing and great. And uh, uh, do, uh, you know, I'm Nawid Khalaqi and I'm the member of Book Club in Mazar Sharif. Uh, if I uh, say about something kind of super book, uh, uh, this book, a kind of a one picture that says a uh, uh, thousand words uh, and uh, didn't need to more than say about this book. Uh, this book more than says about the kind of pain of that person that lived in Afghanistan or Pakistan or Syria that uh, have to do or 
kind of uh, uh, half the door uh, making a kind of mandatory that uh, uh, mandatory or kind of uh, have to do without of his country and Duran and having a kind of a journey uh, and uh, should be a kind of uh, human that uh, leave his country uh, that uh, this group kind of uh, uh, in my opinion if I say one of the person uh, that lives in Afghanistan or kind of Pakistan, Syria that see a uh, close person that leave this country and having this kind of story. Uh, I don't know, uh, uh, but uh, I don't want to do uh, the reason that every person does want to uh, leave his country, but I criticize this book. Uh, of, uh, like a human, this book uh, uh, head, uh, head says uh, about a kind of uh, teeny person that uh, were be uh, uh, referring to a kind of uh, go, on, uh, go out from his country and having kind of problem with her uh, herself, uh, in front of this. Uh, that's my opinion. If you have any question from myself, you can say. Uh, uh, and Ms. Halia, uh, you have a kind of question and then catch, if you uh, repeat it, uh, please, uh, I'm in. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Um, the question that I have is that uh, whenever we talk about the ground realities of war-torn areas, we see that it directly impacts the role of women in any given society. It changes the uh, movement and security of the women. What are the steps that one can take to ensure that women's education, women's empowerment, and women's safety is not something that is, um, that is hampered? So what are the things that we can take, we can do in our own countries, which protect the rights of women, especially when we talk about young girls and they're going to school. So they can make more informed choices um, and decisions. Uh, particularly if I say, uh, uh, and if you have any, you have any questions for kind of this, the, they didn't have any answer from this uh, uh, situation and kind of problem. It should be kind of uh, pro a big problem, as I said, to, to in front of the woman in Afghanistan or Pakistan or kind of Syria uh, or Iraq that we uh, see. Um, that's so uh, kind of. Uh, uh, kind of that we see uh, worrying about uh, ourselves, yourself, and others that say a uh, human or a woman doesn't work in front of the, our home and uh, do not uh, have any right to do something uh, kind of that. Uh, if you catch uh, my answer, you can say it's Thank you so much for that. And on that note, let's ask um, somebody else. Um, would any of the girls like to answer this question? Since it's directed towards the female population, mm -hmm. would any of the girls from Balas have any suggestions what should um, the men in their family do or what should the state do, the government should do in such times? I would really like to know what the girls are thinking over there. Thank you. Thank you, kind Hello, everyone. We should be fine and doing well. It's a such a nice honor being with you today. Uh, so, according to the question that you raised, and it was about the woman empowerment and how can we empower the woman to make a change in society and community. I should say that uh, it is a duty and the responsibility that everyone has asked to do something for women's rights. 
because women's rights are human rights and we women is everywhere. So women education, women empowerment, uh, women working and uh, women taking responsibility towards uh, having a good community and society is a mess. Uh, what can we do? It is a question and it should be answered by us. Uh, there are several ways that we can solve this problem and we can improve the woman role in the society and community. First of all, we, everyone can um, run a lot of nice programs. For example, uh, we have like campaigns, we have uh, workshops, we have trainings, we have entrepreneurship uh, works, and we can, uh, by running them, by having them, and by holding them, we can uh, get the idea of this that women can do everything that they want. Uh, for example, one of the reasons that most of the families travel to other countries is that uh, the economical problem because they don't have any good situation in part of economy. So by uh, having the woman in the part of uh, working, so the economy of the family will raise, will be raised. And this is a good, this is a good point, and uh, it can decrease the immigration also because women empowerment are not just women empowerment, our families empowerment, our society's empowerment, and we can do every every man. We can do something for this. We can take action, not just words. That we speak about the woman rights. We tell something about the woman rights. We say that we are fan of woman rights. No, words doesn't work unless you do. Unless the action that we should take, it is really important, I think. And uh, about the book that I uh, read, it was very fantastic and uh, it was very nice. I did really enjoy uh, reading it uh, because uh, it gave me very great perspective. It is small, but having a lot of words, having a lot of great concepts. And uh, you can uh, think it like this, that uh, mm, the words are not so much important. The concept of it and the message. And I did very enjoy from reading this book. When you read this book, you can have uh, there, and you can feel even the feeling that they have. It is very hard, it is very, uh, this doesn't you go uh, country to country that you will know about the culture, about the tradition, about the people, even about the language that is one of the most important and uh, one of the most significant things for communication. You don't know even the language, but because of the problems, difficulties, and challenges, you have to travel to the country. You don't have any common uh, uh, gesture without the uh, any, for example, if you are human without that, you don't have any common feature, common speciality with them. It is really hard. It is uh, very heartbreaking. Maybe see that not just by traveling or uh, migration uh, legally, it's illegally and uh, it is informally and it gives you very bad feeling toward it. So uh, we can do something. We should start from ourselves and we should do something uh, to make the world a better place, a safer place, a more peaceful place. It is a very significant thing. And that is all. If you have any questions, uh, you can write. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the thought. And on that thought, I have another question. Um, what I really would like to talk about now is like, when we see these uh, pictures and when we read these stories, they um, are very close to home for us because we know of people who have either been looking for safe shelter or we know of uh, family members who have seeked asylum or have seeked shelter because of circumstances in around them. So a lot of these stories feel like they're stories of people that we know personally. And with that perspective, when you read something like the sea prayer, what are the thoughts that come to your mind? And anyone who'd like to talk on that? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning to you. In the name of kind of Allah. Uh, so first. I want to tell you some main idea on the plot of the book that the title was Sea Prayer. 
So it was a book published by uh, Mr. Hosseini about the kid who was sank in the Mediterranean River, way of Turkey. And I think that was so mesmerizing, especially for me, because whenever you see on the pictures, as you mentioned before, the picture had lots of things to do. It was talking with you. Though the book had the short sentences, but the painting was so adorable. And it was talking about the situations of the world, especially the third world, like Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, or other countries. And the main idea, as I mentioned before, was about the horrifying situation of the world, as uh, we are uh, see, uh, as we are seeing that uh, the world is in a terrifying situation, uh, especially in our country, that the major number of people, especially young generation, are leaving our country because of uh, several difficulties like war, poverty, and several problems. And I wish that we change the situation and wish to change the, these difficulties. And we are trying also for that. And that was the main idea that I catch from this mesmerizing book. Thank you so much. If you have any question, I'm here. I will. Thank you so much for that thought. And I thought I'd like to ask somebody else from Bulk who'd like to come and speak about the book and connect it to how they feel when they see these pictures, which are very close to their reality. What is the one thing that you'd like the world to know? That when you take on this journey, like this father and child took, what kind of welcome at the other end or acceptance at the other end would make this journey less troubled for you and give you some hope? Uh, I think uh, having bright minds can solve the situation. It means whenever we have the young generation uh, to learn more, to start uh, generating their knowledge more, and that time we can have the least uh, uh, horrifying situation in our country. And that's not. And I can do about others. Right. Thank you so much for that. Anybody else from Bulk would like to add on to that? Yes. Uh, so, hello and good morning to everybody. Just stop my thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so, actually, I don't read the whole book. Uh, the book was very interesting. I did uh, and I read a lot of books before, but uh, I read the this uh, book. I was really pleased to. Uh, there was something else inside the big, uh, inside the uh, box, so, like pictures. They very inspired me to. The, there's a lot of problems in the entire countries. It doesn't matter Afghanistan or other countries. There's a lot of problems that the people strike me to that uh Mars, 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 So it has really inspired me to uh, read again, again, again the book. And when I came here, I read this book again because why? Because the tools or the pictures we use in book it was very much for everyone. Uh, have read it for uh, still reading for everyone. And uh, 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 there was something that was very much uh, important to young generation in every country, which inspired them 
to uh, recent uh, flag books because you know in the and other countries there are a lot of problems with uh, other countries, especially in our neighbors. You see, uh, the uh, this was very interesting. Uh, it inspired everybody, and uh, it's incredible. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't catch everything that you said because there was some internet uh, issue at my end. Um, but I understand what you were trying to talk about. And thank you so much for those thoughts. On that note, um, we have one participant from Islamabad who's, who's just finished his exam and joined us. So let's get his opinions on board and ask him what he thought about the book and what he learned from it and what he would like to share. So Islamabad, over to you. Uh, Alia, I don't think so. There's any other person except me from Hello? Islam, but it's it's me only who joined you. There's no other person. Uh, I'm sorry for that, and I want to apologize to all the bulk students as well because we were having an exam today, and uh, our students are there, and uh, Mariam and Hashma, my other participants, they are also part of the training. Um, so, on behalf of Islamabad, I want to apologize first of all for this thing. No, that's fine. Um, I thought one of your students was joining in. All right, let's see who is he. Meanwhile, he is joining us. Um, let me take over. And I, I want to talk about the book also, about all the views, which what I was listening on. You know, it's not hard for any one of us to imagine this situation. Um, there was a time once we were reading the books, we need to imagine that how is it possible that this is going to happen. But the world in which we all are living, if we talk about the Afghanistan, if we talk about Pakistan, if we talk about overall the scenario or role of a woman and categorically about the picture, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to understand the situation. And then the role of, uh, of course, uh, a woman in these special situations, uh, they are very important, which we need to understand. And uh, we need to see how we can you know, uh, improve upon this situation. So always, uh, it's just a piece uh, of uh, what you say, it's sort of an experience, but we have seen it uh, to all the students from the bulk is that we need to see the future, living in present, living in this situation, and going through all these experiences of all these renowned authors and writers, we need to see uh, what is the future and how we all of us can play a role in it as a student, as a teacher, as a mentor. I think this is the need of the time. This is all what I want to say. So over to my student. Uh, I am unable to see who is there to join us. Um, uh, yes, uh, it was another student. Thank you so much Pakistan, for that. Not from Islamabad. And oh, he okay. was also disconnected. Yeah. All right. No problem. Okay. So um, I, uh, I will just take on what... Um, a teacher from Islamabad said, and build a thought on that, that uh, one of the things that uh, we never look at is what are we being taught through circumstances? And when we live in circumstances which uh, kind of contradict what we believe to be natural, we have an opportunity for growth. It's a, it's a unique opportunity that comes, on, um, comes into our lap just because of our circumstances of the understand is especially if it us is what war no war campaign like because we understand the dilemma and the trauma of war. Another thing that we understand is how it feels to be a migrant and how to be migrants who are not accepted anywhere in the world. It again gives us a unique opportunity to understand the whole migration process for human beings, why people migrate, especially in circumstances where they are migrating for security concerns. And we can learn to to 
concept of uh, Apologies, I think my advice for that. Uh, um, yeah. I, you know, and I looked at life as hope. And uh, keeping that hope as something that I want to build on, I'd like all of us to think about it. What are the lessons we can learn from being in circumstances which are beyond our control, especially in terms of being in spaces where war is forced upon us? It's not a choice. And another is when the process of migration is thrust upon us. It's not a choice. So looking at these two things, we can learn empathy. That is one of the most basic of human emotions, which is that we can empathize with, with people who have lost or who are struggling or who are fighting some kind of uh, issues, dilemmas, uh, which are um, what they are building upon. So um, on that note, I'd like to take two students from, uh, from Balkh before we come to our closing and ask them when they look at their reality and when they read the book, The Sea Prayer, what are the values of empathy that they feel they can build upon? Anyone from Balf would like to take this question? Uh, sorry, Ms. Olya, can you repeat again your question? Yeah. I was just saying that um, because we belong to areas which are unfortunately in turbulent waters and we uh, see the trauma of war, And we see the migrant as for us as people the opportunity or gives us a unique opportunity to be develop a sense of empathy. I'd like to ask my friend they will work, especially for C press on our what are the values that you feel can build upon? I think, Alia, I can take a little time from you. Meanwhile, students are coming to reply you. Uh, need of the time is to empathize. I, we, we, as I said, we cannot go back. We cannot change the situation. So the biggest thing uh, which we need to learn from the book, from the situation, is that how to support each other. How to, uh, you know, how to stand uh, against these odds and then to survive. And finally, of course, uh, we all... Uh, as you said, that hope is the most important thing. So look into the future. Uh, we cannot change. We cannot go back. So empathy, I think empathy is the need of the time. Over to you, Balk. Thank you so much for that, Rabia. Um, uh, Rubina, I, actually, I think our internet is really messed up. I'm connected on my phone. And uh, I think that's also causing us some trouble. Um, Unfortunately, we are, I think, even out of time. And uh, I just like to take these last few minutes and uh, come to a closing. And what I'd like to close upon today is a thought. And the thought is how can we inculcate better values of empathy? Like, uh, like Rubina so correctly put, uh, empathy is the need of the hour. Um, and uh, when we look at the world and the instability that we find in the world today, one of the things that can really help us overcome these difficult times, especially um, 
when we look at not just the stability that exists in certain regions, but when we look at the epidemic that has hit us, um, the thing that one can really build upon is empathy. And when I say empathy, it is that emotion in which you can feel someone else's plight and try to be kind, try to be gracious, and try to be more tolerant of each other because we don't know what trauma, what uh, uncertainty they are coming from. So whenever we meet other people, we should always take a moment to try and be generous towards whatever could be their forethought. When you look at the sea prayer, again, coming back to the image that starts this whole book is the image of a child, uh, an innocent Syrian child, which is uh, washed up on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. And the reason that the child dies is because it was trying to find shelter and security and nobody wanted to take him in because every country was trying to only look after themselves and their population and not look at humanity at large. Um, not each and every person who is coming from a war-torn area is coming to your land to cause mayhem and take from you. But if you are willing to share, I think there is enough in this world for all of us to be able to survive, progress and prosper. And on that note, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for being so amazing. I again apologize for the instability of the internet connection at our end. But unfortunately, there has been some digging in Karachi and um, the whole city's internet is down. So um, we try to do the best that we could. And uh, we look forward to hosting you again next month with another book. And uh, we look forward to hosting Islamabad again uh, in that session. Unfortunately, the students couldn't, couldn't join in today. And uh, I hope Balk will be kind enough to kind of be okay with their friends not being here. It was lovely speaking to all of you and getting to know your thoughts and ideas. And we look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Khuda Hafiz.